OpenAI's deep research system can outperform PhDs at research, even in their own fields. I'm a final year graduate student at the University of Oxford, and I thought I would share my thoughts on how recent developments in AI show that it's, it has a massive potential to drastically change the structure of academia. So I'm going to talk about three things. Uh, the first is how AI will impact funding. Um, and then leading on from that, talk about how the prevalence of AI and its ability to kind of outcompete humans will probably lead to um, whole areas of research that currently take place um, no longer taking place. Um, so experts in fields will probably be replaced by AI um, and large language models. Um, and then finally, I'm going to talk about how this will change the, the structure of um, academia in the future. So what academia might look like in 10 years time, say, well, probably much quicker because <laughs> or everyone's probably underestimating the, the, the rate of development uh, due to AI. Okay, so the first thing is, no, I want to talk about is funding. So um, at the moment, the way funding works uh, is that professors are given grants, say, and once you give a grant, you have to wait for the uh, professor or whatever to go off, hire some postdocs, I don't know, maybe recruit some PhD students, and then they, they perform, you know, they perform their research. Uh, <clears throat> From a funding body, um, it probably doesn't make sense to use humans to do the research if you can just uh, pay for access to a large language model that can already perform research at a higher level than humans can do. For example, at the moment, at the moment, the uh, OpenAI's deep research um, system isn't better than the best researchers but it's better than recent PhD graduates. Um, <clears throat> and so there's no reason why these models will stop being better than the, the best academics at performing research. So, you know, you have, you can either pay for people to do research or you can pay for large language models to do the research and the large language models will be quicker and also better probably um, in a few years, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the trajectories uh, looks like AI will be far superior to humans at performing research. So why bother paying for humans to do that research? Um, so from a, what this is going to happen, what this is going to do to the structure of academia, it means that if you want to be an academic in one of these fields where uh, the AI systems are able to outperform the human the human researchers. Uh, so this would be kind of theoretical fields like pure mathematics or kind of theoretical physics. Um, fields like applied physics where you have to um, <clears throat> kind of actually do the experiments, then um, this is going to be harder to replace uh, by AI than by, you know, you still need humans to carry out the experiments. OpenAI can't build a uh, particle accelerator or, or something. Um, but the but the, from the theoretical side, um, there's going to be fewer postdocs, fewer PhDs um, in pure mathematics, theoretical physics, um, other theoretical areas, uh, because the... Um, just because the AI systems will be much better. So now th this kind of moves on to um, position number two, which is whether, so like in the long run, the theoretical uh, fields will be rendered uh, sort of obsolete by the large language models. So I guess the reason why, as a society, we fund sort of theoretical research uh, into Kind of physics and mathematics, you know, like th these are fields that at the moment get a lot of funding, you know, compared to like the humanities and, and things, the, there is much more funding to mathematics. Um, and the reason why is that you fund people to make incremental progress and there's sort of a slight chance that they'll make a massive breakthrough. 
which then may lead to sort of um, further developments in other fields down the line. So, so this funding of um, uh, mathematicians, or this funding of research is a bit like a kind of venture capital approach to uh, the funding where you basically give a load of money to a load of people and then there's a, you know, for each person that you give money to, there's a small probability that they'll do, you know, get a massive uh, increase. And then also the other reason that you have this um, sort of branch of academia that is theoretical physics and mathematics is so that um, you perform, you know, like you perform some experiments and then you want to be able to model the results of the experiments mathematically. So the researchers doing the experiments or dealing with the data would then ask the mathematicians um, for their advice on, you know, what's going on here? Are there any patterns in the data? Can we, can we model this? Can we understand what's going on at kind of a fundamental level? Um, and so you need to be able to do this effectively. You need a large body of mathematicians um, <clears throat> who understand the sort of uh, mechanics of the models that you want to create. Um, but what's going to happen is these researchers will no longer need to speak to the mathematicians because they can just ask a large language model or some other AI system, how, you know, I've got this data, how can I understand this data mathematically? And in a year's time, maybe even six months time, the capabilities of the large language model are going to be, it's going to be quicker, cheaper, and just easier to ask the large language models. So then the question is, well, what's the point of having all of these people who are experts in mathematics when the um, large language models, uh, you know, can out you know, when it's just easier to ask ChatGPT? Um, and so some people might say, uh, well, you can't really verify whether uh, the reasoning from ChatGPT is right or not. I think the, the question of verification uh, really isn't a problem because, you know, it gets, we're getting to the point now where um, ChatGPT is able to interact with other systems. So there's no reason why ChatGPT won't be able to sort of come up with a proof of... So, so at the moment you can ask ChatGPT um, to prove something. You know, you can say, like, try and prove this theorem. And then it will give you, um, you know, if the theorem is true, whatever, it will try and give you a, a proof um, of the result. And quite a lot of the time, this is a very good approach. You know, there might be the odd error here and there, but it's it's very good at this for kind of simple um, things or things that are kind of uh, like not overly complicated, but kind of notationally um, taxing or just, you know, um, a lot of algebra to work through or something, chat GPT would be very good at this. Um, and so you might say, oh, but you need the mathematicians because they need to be able to verify whether, um, you know, if we have this, we've got these experimental results, we're asking chat GPT about it. Um, we've, we've got uh, how, you know, we have a potential mathematical model, but this might, you know, it might just be rubbish. Uh, how, how do we know that? So we're going to ask the expert mathematicians to, to check this. Um, I think you don't, I think we'll get to a point where um, <clears throat> ChatGPT will be able to carry out proofs and it will be able to interact with kind of formal proof uh, systems and be able to use those uh, to, you know, be able to use kind of formal uh, proof systems to actually show that, you know, I've come up with this proof and you can actually check this sort of programmatically to show that this is true. Um, and once you have that, then there's no reason you don't need the mathematicians because you've proven directly um, that the uh, the thing that the chat GPT has come up with is actually a solution uh, to the problem. I mean, you do, you will need to kind of be able, be able to understand the, the statements that it's proving. 
Um, but that should be able to be done by the um, researchers that ask the question because, you know, <clears throat> they should be able to, like the uh, proof should be, you know, the, the results that they give should be sufficiently sort of appropriate to the problem um, that the researcher is trying to understand. So, so, so you get to this point where there's no need to have the um, theoretical physicists or the pure mathematicians. Um, and I think this is, this is kind of interesting. And so what happens is the, the process of understanding mathematics has less of an economic or kind of um, societal need to do it. Um, so what would happen is the experts in pure mathematics, it, they'll be viewed more as kind of like artists or something where um, it's more about kind of a human endeavor to understand these kind of weird, you know, mathematical structures that exist, um, which is, you know, I just expect that this is uh, the way that things will go. So, so this leads to a kind of an interesting philosophical uh, idea where if you didn't have AI systems, then there's kind of a, you know, humans only live for 100 years or whatever. You know, you get to the point where to make any progress, you need to spend your whole, your whole life learning a field. And then just as you die, you're able to say, ah, wait, I've noticed we can do this instead. Um, and so that, that's kind of a, a problem that people are concerned about where, you know, there's only, there's probably more, you know, there's, there's going to be more mathematics than humans are able to understand. You can keep asking more and more questions um but the uh but you but you'll get to a point where it's not possible for one person to you know understand enough to then be able to make more breakthroughs so they would get to a point where if you didn't have um large language models or if you didn't have ai systems you can't make any more progress in academia and so everybody working in kind of uh pure mathematics or theoretical physics will be more like kind of curators of the current understanding rather than um, uh, actually making uh, progress. Uh, but what happens with AI, you know, if you have AI systems, then they'll be able to outperform humans and keep making progress. Um, <clears throat> and so really you may as well uh, just replace all of the academics in those fields with an AI system because they're probably going to be it'll be better and quicker to use an AI to, to use AI um, to get the results or to understand the existing literature and also the only way that you're going to be able to make more progress in these fields is by using an AI system um, so yeah so really what will happen is it will just become us like studying mathematics or just become a kind of pastime. It'll kind of be similar to chess, I guess, where <clears throat> computers are much are far superior at chess than humans, but humans still play chess. So there will still be kind of like a human interest in mathematics, um, but there'll be no reason to, um, but for the actual applications of, you know, we want we really want to be efficient at this then you may as well just use a uh, a computer to do the research you know it's kind of like um <clears throat> in the game of in you know in real life you can just cheat and use the ai um that's how you would if you really needed to win a game of chess and you could use any means necessary then you would use a computer um, so if you really need to solve a mathematics problem, then, you, then researchers are just going to use AI systems to do that. So kind of in conclusion, I guess, um, what I'm saying is that because there will be, uh, because AI systems will be more proficient in basically all research in mathematics and theoretical physics, um, there's no reason for there to be an increased sort of high level of, there's no reason for there to be a high level of funding 
in these um, fields. So over the next few years, what will probably happen is there'll be uh, less and less funding going into pure maths and uh, theoretical physics uh, research. And so kind of the whole uh, field of academia, or in particular science, will probably move to where you have researchers that perform experiments, and then the kind of data processing part of that will be kind of outsourced to AI systems. So this is just kind of uh, what I've been thinking about with regards to ChatGPT and kind of the increased use of AI in academia. I'm going to make another video uh, talking about why I'm leaving academia. So this kind of justifies my decision, but I kind of came to that uh, conclusion before thinking about these things. So I'll probably post that next week sometime. So if you're if you've got this far in the video and you're interested in that, then uh, maybe consider subscribing. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and hope to see you in another video.